everybody and here we are this is going to be my video about how i'm going to handle the sieges in uh, the upcoming wars of the roses game and i'm also just going to give you a final update on how my my castle ended up after i basically wanted to add all the extra bits to it um, but first of all i wanted to talk about the the sieges and how how we're going to do it um, so this probably won't be an ultra long video um, because a lot of the rules or specifics of what we're doing will come out in the battle reports uh, we've got a battle report coming um, which should hopefully come out a few days after this video if i time everything right hopefully i will um, however um, I did just want to go through what we're using for basics, where I got the inspiration from, and also just show you some of the final modifications I actually made to the castle um, to get it ready for these games. So I was um, I was chatting with Dom from uh, the channel Boots on the Table, which uh, you should definitely go and check out um, if you haven't before. Um, it's well worth a look, and uh, Dom puts up great content, and he does some Wars of Roses stuff. Um, in, in fact, he does everything. He does absolutely everything. So definitely go over there and check him out um, if you don't already, but I imagine a lot of you already do. Anyway, I was talking to Dom about the idea I wanted to do for Sieges, um, and he mentioned that he had a source book um, for Warhammer Ancient Battles uh, for Sieges and Warfare, and he'd send it to me um, so I could have a look at it. Um, and I didn't really think much more of it. I said, oh, you know, that'd be great. Please yeah, I'd have a look at it. Um, you know, I always have to have a look at books, but I hadn't really can, can sort of... I hadn't ever seen this source book before um, and then it arrived and this is this is the book I hasten to say that he's only lent me this and I understand why <laughs> he's only lent it to me he's not giving it to me um, so this is Siege and Conquest uh, for Warhammer Historicals uh, it came out in 2007 I believe uh, yep 2007 and in this um, it basically gave you the ways to recreate a siege using the Warhammer historical rules However, this book has swiftly become what I think is the possibly the best source book or expansion that I've ever read for a historical game. And I don't say that lightly. Even though this is for a completely different system than what I'm using, because I'm using Hail Caesar, um, the ideas and the structure and everything that's in here was fantastic. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I basically just wanted to share this with you, show you this, um, and then I could probably send it back to Dom. Um, so anyway, let's have a look at it. Okay, so here we are, Siege and Conquest. Now, when I had a, sort of got this, I wasn't too sure what to expect, really. Um, as um, as you'd expect um, with any decent uh, supplement book, it's got a good history section uh, dealing with various ages. Now, this... Uh, book covers everything from ancients, so Egyptians, Romans, Greeks, um, all the way up to sort of late medieval sieges. And then, um, it even does get into some bits past that. Um, so you get a good section on history. Um, you also get a good section on different siege equipment that was uh, that was used. Um, now, obviously, there are profiles in here um, for the old Warhammer historicals. So those of you who are used to that system, me uh, sorry, melee, movement, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, wounds, uh, it brings back fond memories. Um, but it does give rules in here for things that, and ways you can use them. For example, mantlets, which we're going to use in our games. Um, and it just has a rule in here that basically says troops carrying mantlets may not march, charge, or move, or fire. However, However, they can be deployed closer to the enemy, so the mantlets have uh, have allowed them to sneak up to the walls. So, for example, that's something that we're going to be drawing on. There's rules for ladders and, and grappling hooks. So, I basically read this beginning to end, um, and it's the first time I've done that with a source book, especially considering I don't actually own Warhammer Historicals or play it. I played it a, while, you know, a long time ago, but not anymore. Um, and this truly, truly is fantastic um there's some lots of nice artwork in here to give you ideas um just to you know get the uh, creative juices flowing as it were um and it even deals with um fighting within settlements anyway this isn't going to be an in-depth review of this book all i can say is if you do see this book and it's going cheap um on ebay or even if it's not going cheap if you bought this it's a very very worthy addition to any collection um and the ideas in it can be used i think that's actually the perry's i'm pretty sure i've seen that in some of their uh, recent games um and they've just done it up a little bit anyway um the bit that i wanted to share with everybody um was the section on 
siege scenarios and this this is the key thing as to how i've been trying to plan my siege games and how we were going to do them because as tempting as it is to just run a game where i'm trying to get over the walls or defend the walls it doesn't really capture the essence of what the siege was um now the scenarios they've got in here they have a whole a whole range of them and what you can do with these and they indeed suggest in here is link them together to basically create a mini campaign a siege mini campaign so for example in here they've got um, a scenario called the messenger the besieged force is sending for help now i'll come on to it but we're actually going to be using that as our first scenario and then there's other things in here like relief force and traitor and we'll have a look at those in a second this book lays out small scenarios to play um to indicate the passage of time in an ongoing siege and events that might occur obviously there are rules in here for assaulting the castle which is what you want to do but they probably those assaults wouldn't happen all the time and there's stuff going on on the inside otherwise it could be quite a boring game scenarios are well laid out with uh, deployment maps and ideas for forces just to uh, to keep things um even because obviously the people who are in the castle are probably gonna have an easier time of it but there's also rules in here if you're doing things as a campaign so campaign notes so for example on this one here called sortie this is scenario is initiated by the defender losing the scenario will generally be a setback for either either side for the attack of the destruction of siege engines will mean other others will have to be built taking longer time for more relief forces to arrive and then you know so you can link things together um, after the scenarios, um, there's actually um, a whole section on running this as a as a full campaign, and there's there's even rules for um, food, for water, for disease. Um, what happens if a general dies? What about treachery? Um, and then there's a good example at the end of uh, a few um, other scenarios, um, such as uh, the raid on Constantinople, um, and a few other little ones just to uh, keep things going, like an ambush. So what um, my opponent and I have decided to do, and my opponent, of course, is Robin, if you've been watching our, um, our scenarios, is we're going to be using these siege scenarios, but in a, a sort of a, a family tree form. So we're going to play one initial scenario, and we've chosen the messenger. Um, so the besieged troops, which in this case is going to be Robin as the Duke of Suffolk. Um, I'm basically attacking him because he's holding uh, John Neville hostage within his castle in Suffolk, in uh, Wingfield actually. And um, my men are attacking, they're trying to get him back. So the defenders of the castle have seen the men coming and they're going to try and send out a messenger. Now depending on whether Robin wins or loses that, um, we'll decide on the next scenario that's played. And then the winner or loser out will decide on the next and, and so on and so forth. And what we've been able to do is create this. Now, you won't be able to see this one very well, so I'll put a picture on the screen. So as you can see, the first scenario we're going to play is the messenger. Then, if the defender loses, we will play the rapid assault, as my men will be able to assault the walls. The messengers haven't been able to go and get help. If he wins, then a sortie will be uh, organised from the castle as the siege lines have been drawn up. If he then loses that, then maybe a traitor in the walls is going to do something. You can see here from the red triangles, these are points at which we decided the castle can be taken, and the green points are where the siege is abandoned or lifted. So this does mean that the siege could be over in as little as two games. You arrive, the um, besieged uh, player doesn't have time to put everything together, and that's it. They You just take control of the castle. If, however, they manage to maybe get some messengers out, or um, sally out and destroy supplies or cannons then the, the, it can go on and on so this could be over in two games it could take five games um, and that's really what what we wanted to do is, is get that passage of time now one of the key things about this is of course that the table will remain the same between every battle um, and hopefully you'll see those siege lines starting to form um, for things like loss of troops we're basically going to be saying for the besieged side if they lose if they fully rout and lose um a um a selection of troops then either that unit is lost to them in the next game or maybe the unit is there but it can only deploy one size smaller so a standard unit can only be deployed as a small unit the rules for assaulting the walls we're basically just going to take straight out of here because you can see here that fortifications have a toughness and a set of damage points we're just going to alter those slightly um for how 
Julius Caesar. But in between each battle, there will have been uh, cannon fire on the walls, there would have been attacks, maybe some mining attempts. So between each game, as the siege goes on, we need to roll, maybe the walls are becoming damaged. Maybe um, the defenders are getting diseased in their castle. We will roll for all of these. Um, however, this is all going to be a bit of a test for us as well. Um, and if this works out well, then I'll be adding um, sort of what we've done to the uh, the house rule document when I put out the up in the next update. So that's my very sort of quick fire through of Siege and Conquest. Um, as I said, brilliant book. And if you can get hold of it, then that'd be brilliant. So thanks very much to Dom for lending me that. It's going to come in very handy in the upcoming battles. So where are we with the castle? Well, um, I did make a few modifications. Now, uh, my original plan was to film tutorials or rather guides on what I was doing, but I decided that that wasn't really worth it because I really think that people can come up with ideas and do things on their own. But I figured that what I can do is at least round everything up. Um, so one of the first things that I did was I purchased the uh, Perry Miniatures uh, medieval cottage, the, the, the plastic one, um, which is this one here. Now I've actually done a painting guide on this, but this one I cut in half. Now I did that so these could be used as lean-tos against the walls um, and I think they work really really well. Now there were thatch buildings within castles, in fact there's a record, um, I believe it's actually under Henry VI, actually signing off um, on thatchers going back to want to say Carnarvon Castle um, and we actually have a record of how much thatch was being used um, so because it was still uh, it was a much cheaper alternative and quicker than um, obviously doing things in stone so I first thing I did was I just painted these up and I've just basically done that so that they can be used as little guard rooms or storehouses within within the castle itself so that was a quick and easy thing to do um, and I it, it's pretty pretty straightforward and you could do that with any plastic kit. you could do it with an MDF kit um, I just happened to get this one at a really really good price um, and um, I've got quite a lot of cottages already so that was the first thing I did now one of the next things I did was I added this extra level to my castle tower and you obviously can see something else I've done there now this was just done by getting these spare wall sections lining them all up and uh, and then gluing them in place but what i had to do was um pin this because of course there's no slots to go in so on this section here you'll be able to see i've marked and just drilled out these holes so that this can just fit quite quite nicely um onto the top of it you watch i'm not gonna be able to get it on now there we go that's it and it's just added another level to the castle um you can't put troops on that level but from the outside it looks really cool the next thing i added onto here was a garderobe a castle toilet now this was very straightforward all i did was i got hold of some foam bricks um, off of ebay and um, i created a small cardboard box um, as a guide i then stuck all of the bricks around it um, and then a couple of layers of um, PVA glue over the top of that then created this slate roof painted it using the methods that I, I did for all the other parts of the castle um, and then there we go I just added it on and I just thought it was a nice little addition to the castle just to make it look lived in and really really give it a bit of character um, that was incredibly easy to do what good is a castle if you don't know who owns it all I did to add this uh, this flag on here um, inside the castle just here you can see I've added a small tube now this is actually from a, a cotton bud um, I think they're called q-tips um, in the States and um, they're hollow they're hard plastic but they're hollow so I snipped that popped that um, in there and just painted it and then just got one of the banners made up for the castle uh, specifically and I just pop that in there and we can see who owns a castle and I've done one for uh, for me this is the Warwick heraldry flag and I've gone done one for uh, for Suffolk as well so we can see who owns it but all these are just little touches that you can do now one of the final things that I wanted to do uh, was create a base for my castle now if you have a look at Wingfield Castle which is the castle that this is meant to be in Suffolk um, at least for these games that we're playing there is a moat and the moat runs all the way up to the walls so I didn't simply just want to put a stream 
um, around it um, so because I, I could use um, some streams that I've got from other sets I, I wanted this to actually look like a moat um, so what I did after a lot of trial and error I went and I bought um, some foam board from Hobbycraft this is a big A1 sheet of foam board I then drew out um, my plan around the outside of my walls so I knew where everything would be and then I added a four inch um, barrier around that to create the moat. Now once I'd done done that um, I was able to basically start modeling um, the whole thing. So I gave everything a, a bit of a lick of paint and also used modeling compound from Geek Gaming um, to create the outside bank of the moat because of course the inside bank there isn't one it'll just be up against the castle walls. Once that was all done, I could then add ground covers to the inside of the castle, which also gives you know the castle a nice yard, so it isn't just grass inside. Um, and um, then I basically painted the um, the ground, the banks. I added the wooden bridge um, onto the castle and painted that. And then I added flock and static grass over the um, the bank just to mix it in and made sure that I used Vallejo wet mud to basically give it that idea that you know it, well but it's a, a worked and lived in area and there's people walking along the bank. Now the tricky part was actually doing the water so I used some stuff from a DIY shop over here it's called uh, Screw Fix and um, this is some uh, Fixal crystal bonding sealant. Um, I basically just squeezed this into a container, uh, mixed it with um, some white spirit and then when it got sort of the consistency of say, uh, I don't know, bad gravy, I don't know how to really describe it, it, it moved but not quickly. Um, I then tipped it into the moat and then used a spatula to basically just move it around and then let it go tacky and this is the final result um, and it was a lot of fun to do. Now this this probably took me an evening to do but actual build time it was probably only about 45 minutes of painting and flocking and that so you could make multiple layouts. Anyway um, this was the final part of um, the, the, the castle and then when this was all dry I just finished it off with some uh, some reeds to uh, to make the whole thing sort of actually look you know, a, maybe somewhere to be realistic. Anyway, this is really where I wanted the castle to be at, at the point that we could actually start playing some games on it. Um, so using this setup, we're now going to um, start our siege games. So uh, yeah, they will be coming in the next few weeks. In fact, as I said, hopefully the first one will be in the next few days. Anyway, guys, there we go. So there is a quick roundup. Um, it's probably a bit of a ramble, so sorry about that. But just on what, what we're doing with the castle and, and the siege, um, I'm really excited to get into these games because it's something I've been thinking about for a long time and putting some sieges on on the channel and just actually having those those games would be really cool. And, you know, if any of you have got any ideas of things we can do in the siege or any little rules mechanics, then please do send them over i also just want to say a quick thank you as well because um i know that there's been a lot of new subscribers recently um and um, i think that a lot of that might have been off the back of the uh, the little wars award so thank you very very much i really really appreciate that and you know welcome along to uh, what i hope is going to be uh, a really really successful uh, mini campaign on here um so guys um that's it for today's video um i will see you again soon um for the first game just as i'd say in these games the castle may not always be the focal point sometimes pretty much in the first game i think it's basically going to be a deployment area um but um it's just going to be awesome to actually have that setting and actually have the same setting and affect the landscape a little bit as we build up siege works so anyway guys um thank you very much for watching the video if you've got any questions or anything at all then please do drop a comment i do always try and, and get back to you it may take a few days but i, I do try um and um, i will see you guys again in the next one which will hopefully be battle one in the siege of wingfield castle anyway i hope you guys all stay safe and i'll see you all again soon take care